Hello and welcome to the St Aidan's Harvest Service. We're delighted that you've taken the time to join with us as we worship together. Thank you. We hope that you will find our Harvest Service as uplifting as we have as we've produced it. And once again, I would like to say welcome to each and every one of you. We begin our service with a moment of prayer. Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea, and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect the planet and its peoples. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
local trade. Make you a bit more popular, Jesus. Count some of the dodgy rumors that have been spreading about you. Hmm. I've got an idea. You feed them. I think I misheard you there. I thought you said... You feed them. Yes, that's what I thought you said. There's just one <laughs> tiny problem with that, Lord. Philip, are there any good stores nearby? We could buy food for everyone. That is help at the local trade. Look, Jesus, there's no way we can do this. We don't have the money and they're not our responsibility anyway. They're hungry and irritable and they'll be bad tempered. And um, they'll be alright. And the next thing you know, the Romans will hold us an uprising and that'll be the end of everything. Yes, you're right. Too expensive to buy at all. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I know. You feed them. Stop saying that! Look, we'd love to, but we don't have anything. Really? I thought you bought some lunch with you. Um. Well, I mean, yes. No, I mean, we did sort of. But, uh, well, uh, it was lunchtime, so we ate it. Or oh. every last crumb. <coughs> I've got something! Nice try, Andrew. But I don't think a couple of fish finger sandwiches are going to stretch far. Do you? It's a star! Look, I had this little boy's food! Then give it him back! It's called stealing! Here you are, Jesus. Wait a minute, Jesus. This is... Here you are, everyone. Have some of this yummy food. There's loads to go around. Look, Jesus, there's no way we can do this. There are just too many people. There'll be a riot. Tell you what then, Peter. You need a job to take your mind off the problem. How about you get them to sit in groups of, say, 50 or 100? That'll make the distribution more manageable. More manageable? Distribution? Of what? Two crumbs each? Oh, whatever. Right, look, you lot. He said 50, okay? No, not 49, not 51, just 50. And where are you going? You can't come to the here just because your friend's over there. And where are you going? You can't come and join that group because the views are bit better. Go away. Is it just fish and bread? Or is that fixed too? Oh, no, I don't really like it. You won't taste it anyway, it's only two skills per person. So, no alternative, Sam? Yes, there's an alternative. Eat it or leave it. Now go away. Where did you get that? Leftovers. Want some? How did you do it? How did you do it? I just gave you a few bits of bread and fish, and you did the rest. Incredible. Yes, and you know the best bit? Look. Pharisees and prostitutes, rich and poor, sick and healthy, all eating together. The kingdom of God is like a banquet, Peter, a party. Happy are those who come and celebrate. Your God is generous, Peter, and never forget that. We bring the harvest of clean, fresh water to sustain us and revive us. Jesus says, if anyone believes in me, rivers of living water will flow, will flow out from his heart. Blessed be God forever. We bring the harvest of vegetables. The Lord has given us food to eat. He, can re he remembers his promise to be with us always and to sustain us. Blessed be God forever. We bring the harvest of flowers. Look at the wild flowers in the field. See how they grow. They don't work or make clothes for themselves. And yet even Solomon, the great and rich king, was not dressed as beautifully as one of these flowers. Blessed be God forever. We bring the harvest of fruit. Jesus said, I am the vine, my father is the gardener. Blessed be God forever. We bring the harvest of bread. Jesus said, I am the bread that gives life. No one comes to me will ever be hungry. Blessed be God forever. We bring the harvest of wine. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. 
Though your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of the human hands. Blessed be God forever. Jacob left Beersheba and he went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there, were, there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood behind him and said, I am the Lord of the God of Abraham, your father and the God of Isaac. The land of which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust on earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east of the north and the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in your and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. 
This is the word of the Lord. So, it would appear that this 12 month, I am mostly speaking about ladders. Uh, and I can only apologise to those of you to whom that means nothing at all. So what about this ladder? Not this one, but the one in the story we've just heard, recounting some of the life and experiences of Jacob. A ladder set up on earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, with angels ascending and descending on it. Interesting direction of travel. What about it? What about the view from the top? Oh yes, this ladder is taller than you might have first thought. The whole of earth laid out. Blue, green, white, golden, grey, all spinning in infinity. But what if even this is not the top? Everything that our eyes can see and more, more, and much more. But what about the view from the bottom? Well, in some ways, it's exactly what you might think. Both in the day or the night, depending when you think this story and episode took place. What about if you want to go to sleep? We see the grass, the plants, the flowers, the trees. We see it all perfectly normal, perfectly every day, the dust, the mud, the soil. And the Lord God stood beside him. Your descendants shall be like the dust of the earth, spreading abroad to west, east, north and south. And in them all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. This is none other than the house of God. We're invited to hold visions and dream dreams. And perhaps most particularly at this point of the year, we're invited just to look again at the world beneath us and around us and above us. The exotic world, the exciting world, the mysterious world way, way out there, and the perfectly ordinary world right here beside us, uh, beneath our feet, or on which we might lie. We're invited to look at it as something of a gift, placed in our heart, in our hands, for us to use and us to share and for us to see that we receive that same promise. In this gift of life, God stands right beside us, walks along with us wherever we travel, and just like Jacob and just like Peter, we are given that same gift of love and life and blessing with the invitation to take it and share it anywhere and with everyone whom we meet, north, south, east, west. And wherever we do so, constantly to be surprised by just how much more we in turn receive. Utterly simple. Absolutely every day. We can take that dream on. Make it our vision. And then see... It's already God's reality, his living, loving gift in your heart, your hands.
Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the many ways in which you provide for us. Food, family, friendship, housing, health and happiness, and ways to use our time and talents. We lift to you too the ways in which we remain in need of these things. God of generosity, may your kingdom come. We pray for people in our community and beyond who are facing unemployment, ill health, isolation or money worries at this time, and especially for those who are unable to afford enough to eat. We pray for supportive relationships, practical provision and real hope. God of compassion, may your kingdom come. Thank you that you call us to play our part, working with you and with others to bring about change. We pray for, polit for political decision makers and leaders, giving courage and insight to develop policies and systems that support the flourishing of all, so that even in challenging times, no one goes hungry and everyone has dignity. God of justice, may your kingdom come. Thank you for those who are serving and caring for others, in churches, in charities and public services, in our neighbourhoods, in our homes and in many other contexts. Would you give them strength, rest and perseverance? As they work to support others, we ask that they too would receive all they need to thrive. God of love, may your kingdom come. Amen. We will now say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In, In the, the name, name of, of the, the Father, Father and, and of the Son and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen.